Hyper Entitled Hypocrites Christ The Worst My time wasters Life's copy and pasters They had to repeat society's patterns of mistreatment, didn't they? Without even bothering to think Whilst claiming moral sovereignty Acting as if they have impunity Liberals who were so right that they're wrong A popular irony that cloaks reality A way of life that's spinning us into collapse So thanks for that I'm calling in momentous misadvertisement, misleading marketing, finding it in places where it does not belong. Why can't I ever be safe? Including in places labelled as safe. Why can't anyone be accountable? Is our false pride worth the loss of health, of life, the loss of the earth? My blood boils. My reality strains. It toils. Why do I have to keep fighting? I'm tired. I'm hurting. Nature has its own moods, and different areas have their own themes, their own types of music. Can you hear it? We're so lucky to have our own earth-grown festival. Yesterday we explored spaced out pale yellow, green and white parts of the forest. It is artistry, a thoughtful painting, and I love the crunching beneath my feet. I had to really focus to be there. Getting into my body is a lot of active labour. And I did it with the help of the forest. Thank you, forest. By the lake, we played battleships on a picnic table with a flask of tea. I was eagerly collecting my winnings and positive experiences. The sun setting looked like a red and yellow autumn sound and I could see the reflection of plump clouds as well as trees in the lake's reflection. Wow. I wonder what else I can do to help protect nature. Content note, family violence, depression. Will my bloodline ever cause me things beyond intense existential pain? It's running thick through my veins, literal and emotional and inherited. God, I have done so much work with less than little in return, and yet they still are causing and excusing violence, still gaslighting me out of existence. The worst thing is that they know how much it harms my life, and yet they continue. Is that love? Really? That's not a type of love I want acquaintance with. It would be more worrying if I did. It seems they want to silence me, keep using me as a scapegoat rather than recognise their own need for accountability. This is who I am. I own the things I struggle with. I don't hide and I couldn't hide, even if I wanted to. Why would slash how could you? I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. So it seems I was unknowingly ignoring my chronic pain up until my late twenties. Whoops, sorry about that fella. My body was burning alive, loud and silent signals, but I couldn't feel it. I was so used to my disbelief, living through greedy fires and unmet needs. Since I've become aware, before it was quiet and now I am ouching all the time like mean liquid lava, is moving and celebrating around my body. Adverse childhood experiences and chronic illness correlate, so I'm sure it was always likely. You'd think I'd hate this, but it's more complicated. There is essential wisdom in disabled experiences. Important info for our slash selves slash communities. I need to make careful choices at corporeal and emotional crossroads. I'm thrilled when I'm painless, fully existing. I have a golden ticket whenever I can do things that are usually unavailable to me. It wouldn't be the same if I had a non-disabled body. Although I resent them too, struggling creates critical gifts that exist for a reason. Life jackets, solace you only get from living through all the rest, finally tipping the balance.
sunlight glistening through the leaves, sharp, pristine glitter. Nature is such a flirt. Adore me. Its immediate beauty smacks me to attention. I'm infused with awe, enthused enough to rein myself in, back from my past, back from my future. Workplace bullying is prolific. Horrific memories means I'm amazed that I've worked at all since then. I've started to work freelance. I'm loving it, thriving it. Well done me. I'm impressed. I thought I'd be in the ground for longer. Well done for moving, singing, surviving, for processing, for recovery. Thanks to my loyal ex-colleagues, friends and in moments, my some family who have helped me bring in the light. I'm proud of myself. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of being bullied because it was never me and it has never meant that I'm the one that's weak. Heavy shame on adult bullies and the people who join in, who don't step in. Special shame reserved for the ones who then make public speeches about diversity, who publish books on morality. I know you made my life more precarious, but I'm still so glad that I'm not you. Because I could dance, because I was pretty, because I was friendly, people constantly behaved like I owed them something. Can you imagine? A tool with no feelings, like my fate was predicted by them, my gods on earth. So I've been told. And I was hated for it, especially when I didn't get the memo, when I didn't follow their prescriptions. I've been hunted for divine predictions. I've seen people make up elaborate stories about me to try to make me out to be crazy so they can hide their own cruelty, damaging behaviour and jealousy. Because your false subjective reputation has always been more important than me. When will disability rights be mainstreamed, be popular and frankly seen? Disabled insights be trending and collectively understood? When will media minds meanfully see disabilities in a more honest light? Our culture is ableist in every sense. Even medical specialists are. It's intense. And we are too, unless we keep reflecting and polishing our accountability, understanding. What about decolonizing disability and how disabled people can be seen so differently across the world and pre-colonially? Sometimes people are even revered, seen as important, spiritually literate. Let's mainstream that we obviously have valuable ways of knowing the world. Revaluation, add up the equality equation, only then will disabled people be treated as equals. I've been celebrating some good family news, a rare treasure. One of my family members finally understands me and therefore himself more. I can hear the realisation I'm suddenly believed. It all clicks neatly into place and we make better sense. He can now hear what I've been saying for years to usually unlistening familial ears, to aggression and contempt, but instead with him, my story has been corrected in his mind and he has seen his mistakes and takes ownership, revolutionising our relationship. The first family member to admit after four years of heavy work that I am speaking truth. It's great to have a family ally. At last, I'm not naive. I'll always be healthily sceptical, but this seems the most genuine. I am so pleased with him. Got to find me some more conservative friends. ASAP. Only joking a bit. But the people who have hurt me the most, who have been the most damaging and oppressive in my life, sing they are liberal and feminist from the highest balcony. They use it to excuse and hide their cruelty and hypocritical behaviour behind their fake performing public opera. I know, twisted. I'm sickened by their co-option.
their perversion of my sacred beliefs. It is not about being a good person, but it's about being an honourable person. This seems to be much more important, more realistic. Being honest means you can't be good or right all the time. A definitively good person, a desperately good person, a life of living lies and hypocrisies. Let's be honest with ourselves. People who are never wrong don't get to act with honour. They won't have the privilege. I broke up with a friend today because my needs were constantly ignored. Bottom of the pile, of the pack, harmful privileged people prioritised as normal. They seemed fine with such damaging behaviour and demonised me for sticking up for myself, my needs and boundaries. Yawn, that's a new one. And when I built the courage to once again talk to them about the issues when I gave them another chance to be accountable, an opportunity for repair, to acknowledge how the hurt has impacted me. They did not take any responsibility. They minimised, blamed, excused and went for me instead. Yes, I get to see you clearly. It took a while. They ripped out my heart again. They're common, these responses, but it's not good enough. It's not good enough for me. You know, I can never tell if someone is flirting with me. I'm told it's a common autistic trait. I've never been able to do it myself. It's been cancelled out my manual. Not that I'm sad about that. What a relief. What a mess. This unsavoury, confusing, paradoxical, indirect dance is effing dumb, honestly. A waste of everyone's time. Just say what you mean. Christ but not knowing has had its issues. It's dangerous stuff in this ableist world, being misread, not being able to see people's intentions. I'm told to follow their preferences, to place my own needs last. Why, don't you believe me? (gasps) Wow, what novelty. Sure, with my gender and disability, I guess I'm naturally to blame for other people's bad behaviour. I mean, why wouldn't I be? This is your disbelief. I'm socialised for consumption, not for consent or an honest conversation. How dare I? Some more good things that are punishable. Lack of intel has an expensive cost in a world where double standards are standard and lying is breathing.